What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Insurance Auto Auctions here in Oklahoma City for a quick walk around, probably about a good 30 minutes worth. We're gonna start out with some of these cool cars I got up in the front and I've already found two, not one, but two TRXs. Let's start out with a Lexus. This is a 2015 Lexus GS350. And at first glance, I don't even see anything wrong with it. That's what I love about the cars that sit up here. A lot of them have very minimal damage or no damage at all. Now, it's not the most desirable Lexus, right? But it is a really, really nice Lexus with the, uh, I believe it's got the F-Sport package as well. I'm already noticing something going on with the back. Do you see how the trunk is, maybe it's just not closed? No, that's not it. We got some, some gap issues going on in this trunk area. It almost looks like it's open, but it's not. Maybe it took a little hit back here, I don't know. Or maybe it's got an electronic pull down and because the battery's dead, it wasn't able to pull the trunk closed all the way. I don't know. Either way, it looks like the back end took a scrape, but it doesn't look like it took any kind of actual damage. Let's take a peek at the interior and right here, F-Sport. Ooh, gross. A lot of uh, sticky residue all over the pillars here. The interior looks really nice. Windshield is busted. I don't see any hail damage. That's the first thing I look for when I see a cracked windshield is maybe it got some hail damage, but I don't see any of that. The body looks really good. It is about a thousand degrees inside this car. You see it says F Sport on the steering wheel as well. I like this, I do. Let's pop the hood, just take a look at it. I assume a GS350 is still working with a six cylinder and they have not downgraded it to a, a turbo four, right? Uh-oh, looks like the hood might be stuck on this one. This is one that you're gonna need two people to open the hood on and I only have one and that's me. Uh-oh. Well, that's a shame and it looks like it's dead as a doornail as well. Let's see if we can start stop. Nah, she's dead. Absolutely dead. And the uh, the hood will not open. That's a shame. I was really, wait, no, no. I was really wanting to look at this one. Let's take a look over here. Somebody pulled this carpeting back for some reason. I wonder why they did that. All of it, look at this. All of this carpeting has been pulled back. The padding doesn't look like it was ever wet. I don't see any staining underneath. A little bizarre, but I love the interior color combination. This kind of, uh, I don't even know what color that is. Kind of a brown, but also it's got a little bit of what looks like mahogany in it. Huh. I like the color on black with gray trim and then black exterior with like this gunmetal gray wheels. Sharp looking car. Really, really like it but we can't check it out, so let's move on to the next one. The BMW M3 is still sitting here. This one's got some pretty significant side damage. Take a look over here. It was crunched pretty good in the B-pillar. A lot of B-pillar damage, rocker damage. This is something, I look at this and I think, who on YouTube would be a perfect person to fix this car? And you know who comes to mind? Backyard Boys. Backyard Boys. Yeah, I see this car and I'm like, this is you, man. If you see this video, you need to come check this out, dude, because this, this is you. I've seen that dude fix <laughs> way worse, way worse. He's working on that RS7 right now. That's been a real headache. He's got, he's got a lot going on. I don't think he needs another project, especially an M3, but this, this could be a great project. Here we got a 2017 Cadillac XT5. I'm not the biggest fan of these. Uh, Unfortunately, I just, it, it, this is, it really makes me sad to say this, and it, it, it seems to offend a lot of people. There are people that get so mad in the comments when I say something about a vehicle and they don't agree with it. I mean, they get, they get angry, like they get really angry. It's just my opinion, all right? Your opinion is going to be different from mine and that's perfectly fine, but you don't have the right to tell me that my opinion is wrong. You know what I mean? Any more than I have the right to tell you your opinion is wrong. My opinion is that newer GM vehicles are junk. It's, and I'm sorry if that hurts somebody's feelings, but 
Uh, that's just the way I feel about it. I said in a previous video that the new Escalades were absolutely crap vehicles, and this guy wrote a novel telling me why the Escalade is great, why it's perfect, how I'm just a broke boy walking around a salvage yard looking for junk vehicles for my family. And I'm like, this guy obviously has no clue what he's talking about because I make my entire living a very nice, comfortable living walking around junk yard vehicles, as he put it. So, uh, guy definitely doesn't know anything. He was obviously very triggered about his Escalade. He told me, I make so much money, I buy a new Escalade every eight months. Am I impressed? Not really, man, not really. It was a year ago today, as of filming this video, I bought a TRX and I bought the Grand Wagoneer Series 3, which costs more than his Escalade. Um, that was $126,000. I've had three Teslas, you know what I mean? I've, I've had two Hellcats, one was a wide body red eye. So you're not going to impress me with an Escalade that has an engine it's absolutely gonna break down on you. You know what I mean? Now, here's here's the catch. If you're gonna trade these things in every eight months or so, and you wanna be that upside down, um, that's fine. You wanna lose 20, 30 grand every eight months? Not a problem, that's your business. And you're very likely to have a good experience with a GM vehicle if you get rid of it after six to eight months. I would say you're very likely to really get to enjoy it, but is it worth for a General Motors vehicle, a Cadillac, is it worth $20,000 every six to eight months on an Escalade to trade it in for a new, it's an Escalade, man. You're not driving a Bentayga. That's, that's, that is where I'm at. I like Cadillacs, I've always loved Cadillacs. In fact, I've always loved General Motors, but in recent years, I'd say the past 10, 15 years, they have been building some, 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 well, junk. They've been building junk. And I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel about it. So the XT5, it, you know, it's, it's a small SUV Cadillac. It's, it's nice. It's decent. I don't know anything about it to really say whether it's a reliable vehicle or if this is just another one of, you know, GM's mass produced crap boxes that they've been putting out lately, but we'll take a peek under the hood. And I'll tell you this, things like, uh, things like my, what was it? I had a 2012 Chevy Cruze back in the day. I loved that car. Everybody told me that those cars were junk. They had nothing but bad problems with them. I had great, great reliability out of my 2012 Chevy Cruze Eco with the little uh, 1.4 turbo. I replaced the turbo once and it had 200,000 miles when I got rid of it. I replaced shocks, struts, uh, struts brakes, tires, and did, kept my fluids changed and that's it. I never had any major mechanical breakdowns or problems out of the car. It was easy to work on and I loved it. So I don't know exactly when, maybe it's been the last decade or so, but I feel like somewhere around the last 10 or 15 years, GM's quality, again, in my personal opinion, has just, really tanked, man. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at under here. Looks like a direct injected V6. Uh, well, there you go, V6 VVT, probably a 3.6 liter. They put it in everything. Yes, a 3.6 liter. Okay, so it's basically the engine I have in my Chevy Impala. Um, yeah, it's it's my Chevy Impala engine shoved inside of a Cadillac. I, I I got a 2016 Impala, and I'm certain I have a very similar motor to this. So that's not all that impressive. I could be wrong. This may be like an overhead cam. I can't really see what's going on down there. Yeah, actually, I think this is an overhead cam engine, and I believe my Impala is the old school pushrod V8. But again, I'm not really up to date on all the the GM stuff as of late. This is decent though. I mean, I like it. it. It looks nice. It's a it's a kind of a mid-size, small to mid-size SUV. It runs great. It's only got 65,000 miles on the odometer. It's got the Cadillac user experience, which I'm not the biggest fan of. It's great when it works, I guess, but personally, I'm old school. I like knobs. I like buttons. So I guess you could say Cadillac is just too luxurious for me. I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't stop thinking about that that guy and his Escalade, man. <laughs> I was sitting there just kind of, I was kind of blown away by how much time he took out of his day to write these paragraphs after paragraph after paragraph. This guy just wouldn't stop telling me how much money he has and how great 
the Escalade is. And I'm just like, if you've got that kind of money and you're really trying, like you really need people to see you, you really need people to know that you are a baller, like you're a top dog, right? You don't buy an Escalade. All right, an Escalade is a great, like, middle, upper middle class luxury vehicle. Okay, I said it, luxury vehicle. It is. They are very nice looking. When they run right, they are phenomenal vehicles. I do love them. But they terrify me because when that 6.2 pops, you're going to be looking at a minimum of $4,000 to fix it. And don't forget they have transmission problems too. So if the engine doesn't get you, the transmission will. If you've got that kind of money that you can dump twenty dollars to $40,000, every eight months on yet another Escalade, why aren't you in a Bentley Bentayga? Because if you could afford that, you could afford the Bentayga. Now that I got that little rant out of the way, all right, a pair of Ram TRXs. I, this never happens. I have never seen two TRXs sitting side by side, or in this case, front to back. I've never seen two of them at once at any of the auctions I've ever been to. So this is pretty unique. Now, as many of you probably remember, I had a TRX and I loved it. It was a black, uh, what was it? Level three, tech three, whatever, three. It was the fully loaded, fully decked out TRX and uh, I'm here to tell you I loved that truck and I still miss it. This was used by construction and I'm going to tell you something else. If you need a business expense, right, this is a great one. I used mine as a business expense. Believe me, that truck was used for work all the time. I hauled cars. I did business all over the place in my TRX and it got horrible fuel economy and it cost a ton of money and I loved every single minute of it. Look, the car payment was high, okay? The gas mileage was ridiculously bad, so the fuel costs were really, really high as well. But it all went away. You forgot about all of that the minute you put the start button to your finger and fired it up. The minute you heard that exhaust rumble, the minute you hit the throttle and you feel the power, you hear the supercharger whine as you start screaming down the road, passing everything in sight. Yes, guys. Yes. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll make you forget all about the high car payment and the high cost of fuel um, for a minute until you park and you shut it off. And, and then you're back to going, my God, what am I doing? Uh, so yeah, a pair of them. I don't even know why this one is here. I know why this one is here. This was a theft recovery. Now why it's still sitting here, I have no idea. This this thing has literally been here forever. Um, in fact, I don't remember much about it. I'm sure it's dead. Yeah, this one is totally dead. We're not gonna try to jumpstart it or anything, guys. Uh, they're obviously not up for sale yet. These aren't ready to be sold, so there's no reason to go through and and uh, fire them up. But look at that. A pair of TRXs sitting right next to each other. Uh, it makes me want one all over again. It does. This one, I think, is missing the glove box. Yes, very bizarre, right? Isn't that weird? The glove box is just, it's just missing. I actually, I think it's in the back seat. Hold on. Is it in the back seat? Yes. Glove box is in the back seat. Why? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But which one would you pick? If you were going to buy one and you could get it for a good price, would you take the black one or would you take the blue one? All right, the Corvette is still here. This is a Grand Sport. I've always wanted a Grand Sport. I just want to see how it handles. Supposedly, if I remember correctly, the Grand Sport is actually wider. The suspension is tuned differently. It's, it's more of, I think, a track-ready car. I think it probably rides a little rougher than the regular Corvette as well, but I, I, one of these days, I might go ahead and get one. I, you guys know I love my Corvettes. I've always loved Corvettes. To this day, I still do. It's just that deal where I bought a brand new C7 and it broke and that, that went downhill real fast, real fast. And now I'm just kind of eh, kind of staying away from the, uh, the Corvette scene. But I don't know, maybe, maybe coming up sometime in the near future. Maybe I'll consider getting another Corvette, bringing another one to the channel. Here's a, what is this, a Telluride? Is that what this is? No, this is a minivan. A Sedona? It's a, a Carnival. A Carnival. Again, I'm going to offend somebody. 
So cover your ears if you don't want to be offended. What in the hell is a Kia Carnival? Oh, nice. We're, we're back to, there we go. I thought the door wasn't going to open. There's a sale sign in the front. This is bizarre. You know, here's the thing. It's actually a pretty good looking van. I think anyway, I think it's a pretty cool looking van. I like it. I didn't even realize it was a van at first. From from looking at the front, it didn't occur to me this is actually a minivan. I like it. But to call it a carnival? Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know about calling it a carnival. What do you drive? I, I drive a, a carnival. Can, can you imagine that telling your buddy? Let's say you're like, say you're an iron worker, right? Or you're a union worker. You know, you got one of them real hardcore jobs. You know, you're climbing up. 20 stories high welding and you it's your buddy's like hey i heard you got a new car bob what'd you get yeah man i i got a kia carnival <laughs> oh dude you never hear the end of it the new school acura integra is still sitting here she's still sitting here and the denali oh my goodness this denali is still sitting here too I don't need it. I'm, I said I'm looking for cheaper trucks, but I'm not going to lie to you. It's addictive. It, the, the new stuff, having something new and all the new technology, all the latest and greatest, man, it, it's addictive. It, it, you really want it. You know, you really, really want it, and it's great. But then it's like after a year or so, you start going, man, is it worth the car payment? You know, I don't know. At least it is for me. I'm one of those people, like, even though I can afford the car payment, it, it's just it sticks in the back of my mind for some reason it bothers me you know it really bothers me to go man i'm gonna pay you know eighty thousand dollars or ninety thousand dollars for this pickup truck and when i'm done using it in seven years it's gonna be worth what 20 was it really worth the fifty thousand sixty thousand dollars that i'm gonna lose on it Ah, it's just a vehicle to get you from A to B. I love nice vehicles, guys. You guys know that. You guys know that. I love nice vehicles, but lately, and I don't know why, I can't explain it, but as of late, it's just been on my mind a lot. These car payments. I don't want car payments. Now, it's not to say I won't change my mind later, but like right now, I'd rather have a $3,000 truck that's paid off, that'll get me where I need to go cheaply, reliably, and just get the job done and save me. Listen, my Ram 3500, you know how much I pay a month for that? It's 1100 and change, probably like 1150 a month. Full coverage insurance on it, probably another 200 a month. You know, that's $1,300-ish a month for a pickup truck. It, that, that make, I, I don't even use it enough to justify that kind of money on a car payment. So, you know, that's where I'm at today. Now, speaking of car payments, I'm going to show you guys something that I did not know was here. All right, are you ready? You've already seen it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, a 2020 saline. <laughs> man, oh man, run and drive 21,000 miles on the odometer. Why is it here? It looks like it's hail damaged. That's it. I don't care. Yeah, it's hail damaged. I don't care. I do not care. I would, I would drive this thing. Are you serious? Oh, let's take a peek at the inside. It's hard to see how much hail damage there is because of the dust. The dust really fills in some of those dings. I can see some. To me, it doesn't look that bad, guys. It really doesn't. Let's see if we can take a peek at the inside of this one. The other side is all taped up. Does it smell funky? It does. Uh, ooh. It took a, a about three seconds for the heat, the heat to come out and hit me in the face, it smells really bad. So I don't know, you know why? Because that window was down for whatever reason. Yeah, that window is down a hair, so it's, uh, yeah. That's pretty rough, guys. She does not smell good at all. Do you think it's got a, do you think it's got juice? I can't help it. Ooh. Oh. 
Oh, come on. It's dead. Oh, look at these gauges. What a thing of beauty. And the speedometer only goes to 160. You know that's a lie. That's a lie. 160? Tachometer, 7250 RPM to redline. Oh my goodness. And it smells so disgusting in here. Oh my gosh. I did that for you. That was all for you, because this is awful. All right. Well, let's take a look at the supercharger. Oh, oh man. Wow. Now, you know, I was just talking about car payments, and I don't need a car payment. Nobody needs a car payment. I, I, I think I need a car payment. I do. I think I need to get rid of the RAM and pick up one of these. I wonder what this costs. You know, what's the, what's the retail on a used 2020 saline with 20,000 miles? What do you think? Here's some information, little placard right there. Serial number, serial number 20-026, which they were proudly sporting on the front just to let everybody know. This is number 26. This is an absolutely beautiful car. Beautiful car. And I know you want me to fire it up. I, I know that. I know. But, again, this car is not up for sale yet. And if it would have had power and started on its own, that would have been one thing. But I'm not going to go grab the jump pack and hook it up and fire it up. I'm just not going to do that. Um, Man, if it does come up for sale at some point in the future, I will catch it and I will come back and we will absolutely fire this thing up and listen to it. What a beautiful car. That is still sitting here. The 47 Ford, the Nismo, the Saturn. Sorry, Pontiac. Oops, I'm going to get yelled at in the comments for that. And of course, we have the Alfa Romeo. We still have the Porsche and a Jeep. This was all of their nice high-end vehicles. Well, not all of them. That one is, that one is. I would say that's not, but it's unique. It's older. This is definitely not high-end, but I still like it. it. Again, unique. That's high-end. That's kind of high-end. This is absolutely high-end. Obviously, this and this, the Tesla, the uh, Model X over here, of course. If I remember right, this one is dead. Uh, the Kia is definitely not. Yeah, this one is this one is dead. We saw this one last time. The TRX is most of this stuff is kind of high-end, high-dollar type of stuff over here. But uh, there you go. Backyard boys, come get you an M3, man. You know you want it. Well, you know the drill. It's time to walk around and see what we can find over here today. Maybe we'll look at some campers. We haven't looked at campers in a long time. It's been a really long time. And... Uh, if I can find any decent boats, I'm thinking about buying a boat. Austin Carr, you guys remember Austin Carr? He just bought a boat, and now I'm jealous, and now I want a boat. But I don't want to go. I don't want to go and have payments on a boat. I just I want a cheap boat, but one that doesn't sink. You know what I mean? Here's you a nice little yellow Wrangler. It took a took a pretty good front end hit. Hit both airbags are blown. I don't know how bad do you think that is. I don't think there's any. Frame, ooh, scratch that. Maybe so. There might be some frame damage. Okay, we'll skip that one. Let's continue on. <sighs> Had one of these back in the day. Hell, this one may have been mine. No, mine was blue with a black stripe going down the middle. Oh, we saw this. We saw this one uh, last week. They moved it. They had that way in the back. Now it's out here in the front. Here's something else I've been considering. One of these, like, what do they call these? Transits? Or transport vans? I've really been considering getting one of these and doing, like, a, a low-budget, because, you know, I'm cheap, a low-budget kind of conversion for a camper. I'd love to have one. I think it'd be cool to have something like that and be able to drive it all over the country and not have to pay for hotels, just sleep in it. It's small enough you can still get through most of the drive throughs It's easy to maneuver, but there's a lot of room on the inside. Let me, let me show you guys real quick. This one is an actual 
passenger van, which appeals to me a little bit more, I think. Um, well, probably not because of the windows, right? You kind of want a cargo van because with all these windows, how easy is it for... I mean, you could put curtains up, but the idea is it's much easier for someone to to break in, you know? You could be sleeping and somebody breaks breaks a window. Look how much room there is in this thing. This thing's only got 86,000 miles. I'll bet it's here for, uh, for hail damage. What the hell? Um, it's Enterprise. It doesn't say what it's here for. It's just, it's an Enterprise. Let's walk through the mud. Oh, that's a big door. Wow, there is a lot of room in this thing. Really. There is so much that you could do with something like this. I have no idea how much these are worth. I know the Mercedes Sprinters are kind of ridiculously priced. Um, I did find a Mercedes Sprinter Ambulance the other day because I'm actively looking for one of these. I did find a Mercedes Sprinter Ambulance. It was a full ambulance. Still had all the lights and sirens. It had half a million miles on it, leaking oil and everything. And they wanted, what was it, $5,600? And the price seemed really good, but half a million miles, and you could see the oil just pouring out from underneath it. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that, but maybe something like this one, right? This is another Enterprise, 2020 Ford Transit. And this one, oh yeah, that's hail. I don't care, I don't care about the hail. Like, I'm not trying to look cool. Let's, let's be honest, number one, it would be very hard for me to look cool ever. But if you're driving one of these, it's gonna be even harder. All right, nobody drives something like this and is like, wow, look at the Ford Transit, man, that's cool. No, I mean, you could make them cool for sure, but this this is, this is not that. What is going on here? That's the, what is that, the passenger side front door? It looks like it was the passenger side front door. A lot of room, and this is what I like. Look, you can stand up in this and there's still plenty of room to the top. Now, it is hot in here, super hot. There's, you know, just bare metal that's hot as the sun up here. So you have to do a lot, a lot of insulating, and of course, insulating means you're going to lose cargo space. Um, you're gonna lose some cubic footage insulating all of these sides. I mean, these sides are super hot too. It, this is just like, you know, crappy pegboard looking stuff they got on the side here. But you gotta insulate all of this. But I think you would still have room to stand up. There'd be plenty of room still. You could put a bed back here. You could put, oh hell, Rich Rebuilds did one of these for Linda. And that came out phenomenal. Now I could, I could never, I don't have that kind of skill. You know what I mean? Um, I could never make something like that. But I think, I think I could turn something like this into a pretty decent, camper and the fact that it's a really bright white makes the hail damage that much harder to see i just don't i don't know what these go for is this this is the ford the ford transit 250 which means it's a uh, a three-quarter ton right to me that's it's bizarre to see something like this and think that this is a three-quarter ton vehicle it's it just seems weird i i don't know you got some damage right there where something got this is ripped pretty badly. You catch yourself on that, that's going to be a bad day. Did that even close? Does does it even close? There we go. It does, but the integrity has been compromised down there. It's all right though. It's all right. I don't know, guys. What do you think? This one is uh this one's bigger. <laughs> this one's bigger. I don't know about whipping this one through a drive-through. You know, going through your local McDonald's, that might uh, that might be a bit of a problem. Anyway, I'm going to consider this one. So I'm going to take the lot number. Only 64,000 miles on the odometer. I don't need to start it, you know. It's just something I'm thinking about. If it goes for like a great price, I'll just buy it. I, I don't need to start it and do all the gears and everything. It's a hail car, which is most likely why it's here. So I'm not too concerned with the, the drivetrain and all of that stuff. I'm sure everything works in it. Let's continue on and see what else we got. It looks like some things have changed since we were here last week. That means that they have sold a lot of cars. I love that Hyundai. I'm not gonna show it to you because I know you guys are tired of tired of seeing those Hyundais, but I just, 
I just love those little things. I think they're sharp looking cars. There's a Mercedes over there that looks like, I don't know, somebody, somebody put their own touches on it. So far, oh, a Ford, no, come on. Don't do it. You don't need a Ford, you already got a Ford Taurus, man. Now I had somebody ask me, I'm gonna show this car because somebody specifically asked me in the comments, one of my last videos, to please show this, uh, this P71 Crown Vic. So here you go. I'm gonna even get the lot number for you. I'm not gonna bid on it, I'm not gonna bid against you, but there it is, 369-49814. State Farm Insurance, 2009 Police Interceptor Crown Vic. And this is here for hail. Why the trunk is stuck open, I could not tell you. I don't, uh, I don't know what's going on with the trunk. It doesn't look like it was rear-ended. Obviously, I can't open the trunk to look inside because of the plastic, but severe hail damage. All right, really severe hail damage. And take a look at the back seat. Leather, doesn't have a cage. Really nice, you can fit people back there. I can't remember for the life of me who asked me to show this, but I hope you're still watching the videos because uh, here it is. Does it have power? We can try to, we can try to start it. Oh, wow. Oh, that seat sucks. <laughs> that seat really sucks. God, it's a thousand degrees in these cars today. Oh, gross. There was somebody's grime all over that. It went up under my fingernails. Dead as a doornail. But, looks like somebody had the AC on. Lots of wiring, you know, that someone cut out of it. So that's great. I'd be afraid to put power to this, to be honest with you, with all the with all the cut wires under there. Let's pop the hood, just take a take a quick peek. Hell there may be somebody else out there may be interested in this and come on. There we go. There it is. Workhorse. Oh they even took the they took the battery. Wow that's that's petty. That's really petty to steal the battery, man. Okay. You guys know I kind of have a philosophy about cars and missing batteries. I just tend not to buy them. I feel like if someone pulled the battery out of it, it makes me feel like there was something very wrong with it to begin with. Where like pulling the battery was like the final nail in the coffin. That's how I see it. Now, some people don't see it that way, but typically I will not bid or buy a car that has no battery because I feel like there's something something else going on. But anyway, there it is. There's your, your J Mark. I don't even know what J Mark is, but there's your, <laughs> there's your J Mark police car that you asked for. Hopefully you see this video. Now let's move it on and see what else we got. We got a V6 Camaro. You know, it's nice, but nah, no thanks. <laughs> And moving down, a Honda, a Jeep, a Hyundai, a Ford, another Honda. Oh boy, that's a that's a mess. We got some nice trailers though. Should we just let's just run across the street real quick? What's it gonna hurt just to just to take a peek? at a couple of these travel trailers. We're doing it all in this video, guys. Trucks, cars, travel trailers. We're doing everything. Let's see, why is this one here, do you think? I'm gonna sit this on the floor right here. Can I just climb up on this? I guess I can. Oh, wow. Woo! Oh, oh. This is like new. Oh, okay. Now, now I want not only a boat, but I want a camper too. Yeah, I want a camper too. So I guess you could fit more people in here. But if you don't have enough people to take up all the space, you fold that up and it gives you a little more room. <sighs> yeah, I'll, I'll take it. What is this, the bathroom? No cabinets? Oh, it's got slide outs. That's what I'm missing, it's got slide outs. There's your bathroom. Good Lord, look at all the room in there. Wow. Fancy, I like it. I really, I like it. And then of course you got your master bedroom up here. Look at your kitchen. Wow, this thing looks new. 
I mean, it's not, but it looks relatively new. This is nice. Let's see what's in the fridge. Nothing. The only thing it's missing is a dishwasher. Hell, it might even have that somewhere. Look, you got a big screen TV. Bedroom back here. Yeah, I don't know what this is doing here, but this shore looks nice, doesn't it? This is, yeah, this is sick. Let me climb down, climb up out of here. Ugh. Try not to fall and bust my back. We'll go check out another one real quick. If you saw something that I missed, well, definitely drop a comment below and tell me. I saw this one over here. I kind of want to see this too. Uh, this Forest River. I like this. It's a big trailer. It's a real big. Is this a bumper pull? I want a bumper pull. Let's see. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's got double interstate batteries. You got your propane hookup. And I love this. So you don't have to stand there and crank the thing manually. You just push a button. It probably works too. Is it connected? It's dead. Yeah. The ram goes up and down and it uses those batteries. Oh, hail damage. And you got to watch out for these hail damage ones, man. I've had a lot of people tell me hail damage turns the roof of these things into like cottage cheese. Is that what they said? Or Swiss cheese cottage cheese. It's hot. It's hot. I've had several people tell me to watch out for these because it turns the roof into cottage cheese. So uh, I might be a little concerned about that. I don't really care about the, the aesthetics of the exterior. That's the only door? That's the only way in, no kidding. I'm not really all that concerned with the aesthetics of it. I'm more interested in, you know, how's the interior, and I'm definitely concerned if, uh, if we've got a problem like holes in the roof or something. Nobody wants that. Oh, wow. These things are, they're so expensive though. That's, that's the problem. Let me climb back up. Oh, this is nice. They are, they're so expensive. Like even, even salvage, these things are pretty expensive. Look, you got a freaking island? Are you serious? Look at this refrigerator. My house doesn't have a refrigerator that looks this good. Wow. Okay, you got this big couch. Oh, it is hot today. And in here, it actually feels decent. Normally these things are about a thousand degrees. This feels pretty good. I like this. I do. You got speakers all up under here. You got your TV up there. Yeah, this is this is cool. I'd love to see the rest of it, but I don't think we can get to it. I gotta jump out of here. Close this. Is there no other way? No, I don't think there's any other way in. Lots of storage. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, I want one. I just don't want to pay, you know, the ridiculous money, you know, 30000 or or more for a travel trailer. I mean, I would find a use for it, but I wouldn't use it enough to justify spending uh, 30 plus thousand dollars on something like this. This is a 2013. Wow, this is old. This is very old and it is in remarkably good condition, really. Okay, I think I'm done with the trailers. Let's move on. Well, who am I kidding, guys? We're not gonna move on to the next one. This video is over half an hour long. I didn't realize how long this video had gotten. We are going to bounce out of here, but don't worry, I got another video coming for you guys very soon. So if you enjoyed this content, well, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Also consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.